Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological thriller film, Peacock. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a woman named Emma, frantically retrieving the laundry that was hanging outside of her home. She keeps her curtains closed and anxiously waits for the newsboy to pass her street before she gets the newspaper. The woman watches the people outside of her home and glances periodically at a clock. She then walks down the hallway into another room where she stares at the mirror and removes her makeup and wig, revealing that she's actually a man. His name is John, and he has dissociative identity disorder and frequently switches to his other personality, the strong-willed and maternal Emma. The scene cuts to John eating breakfast at the dining table. He reads the newspaper and grabs the lunch that Emma packed earlier. Before he leaves for work, John enters his backyard and opens up one of the steps, which houses a hidden box containing a bank card and a folded piece of paper. Sometime later, John arrives at the bank and starts his day at work. The boss enters John's office and hands him a pile of files. He then places a flower lapel on John's breast pocket and hands him his paycheck before he leaves. John takes out the folded piece of paper and removes the key hidden inside. Moments after, John cashes in his paycheck and stores it inside a safe deposit box. After work, John rides his bicycle to a nearby lake where he opens the lunch bag Emma prepared for him and reads the note she wrote. She tells him to stop by the market and hurry home afterward. Later in the evening, John stops by the market to buy food and baseball cards. He meets a neighbor who invites him over to dinner, but John excuses himself and leaves the market. Back in John's backyard, he grabs the hidden box once again and puts back his bank card and the new baseball cards he bought. He sits down on the stairs and eats a chocolate bar while he stares into the night sky. John returns to the house and heads to bed. The next morning, a train malfunctions and crashes into the backyard while Emma is taking the laundry. She awakens to find the neighbors hurriedly helping her stand back up. The neighbors try to figure out who Emma is and what she was doing in John's backyard. She rushes back inside the house and closes the curtains. John wakes up a few moments later and gets dressed. He opens his back door to find the train crashed in his backyard, and people gathered around to ask him if he was okay. John excuses himself and heads back inside, where he finds a note from Emma telling him not to talk to the strangers and head straight to work. On the way to work, John meets the police officer who asks what happened, but he refuses to indulge the question and hurriedly leads for work. When he arrives, his co-workers ask him about the train, but John refuses to speak about the incident. The mayor arrives and tells John to take the day off, but he refuses. His boss arrives and gives him more files to complete, which he gladly accepts. Afterward, John hurries home to find children playing in his backyard among the wreckage of the train. He exits out the back door to shoo away the children, but to his surprise, the officer is also in the backyard waiting for him. The officer asks about Emma, thinking that she was John's wife and tells him that he must fill out papers and contact the train company to get repairs. John speaks with the train company over the phone, and he requests that the train be removed by tomorrow, but the company reiterates that it would take no sooner than Friday to remove the train. The next day, two strangers barge inside the home. The mayor's wife and the senator's advisor want to talk to John, but Emma tells them he isn't here. By now, the two of them and the rest of the town have assumed that Emma is John's wife, they want to use the wreckage of the train as a place to hold a rally to boost the support of the public for the senator's re-election. The mayor's wife reveals that her husband owns the bank that John works for. She states that she's planning to use the rally as a way to raise money for her shelter. Emma excuses herself and heads upstairs. A little while later, Emma comes back down and offers the guest food and a beverage. The mayor's wife tries to convince Emma to talk to John about the rally, stating how it would help displaced women and children. The guests leave shortly after. Later inside, the phone rings and Emma speaks with John's boss, telling him that he will be coming a little late for work. John hurries to his office, only to find the mayor, the mayor's wife, and the advisor talking inside. They introduce themselves to John and show him the news headlines, stating that his wife narrowly escapes tragedy and how Emma supports the idea for the rally. He begins to break down, telling them that Emma is not his boss. He angrily refuses the idea for the rally, because if he agrees, they will be expecting him and Emma to appear. And since John and Emma are the same person, John's secret will be revealed at the rally if it continues. The mayor talks to John alone to try to convince him, but John tells him that Emma cannot do this. Later that night, as John is about to go inside, he's stopped by a young mother with her little boy. She asks John for financial help so that they can leave the town, but John asks why he would help her. She tells John about the checks his mother sent to her and that she hasn't received a check in a while. He tells her that his mother died a year ago and asks what the checks were for. She pointed to her little boy. 
John runs upstairs and tells them not to leave. Moments later, Emma comes downstairs and asks who the young mother and the little boy are. They excuse themselves and turn to leave, but Emma offers to drive them home instead. They arrive at a trailer and the young mother offers Emma a drink. She reveals that the little boy is John's son and that she was paid by John's mother to sleep with him. She recounts how his mother made John do terrible things. It's implied that John's mother was abusive and is the cause of his dissociative identity disorder. When his mother died a year ago, he created his Emma personality, who is like his mother, in order to cope with his mental conditions. The young mother then gives Emma the little boy's birth certificate as proof that he's John's son. The next day, Emma speaks to a man on the phone about wanting to adopt the little boy, but the man tells her that both she and John have to come in together for the adoption. Emma comes to the shelter to talk to the mayor's wife about agreeing to the rally. They also visit the advisor to tell him that the rally will happen. The officer stops Emma and tells her that John and she need to sign the incident report together later tonight, but she excuses herself and heads out to talk to the mayor's wife. Emma drops off the mayor's wife back at the shelter. Later that day, Emma visits the young mother at her job and talks to her about them staying at the shelter run by the mayor's wife instead, but the young mother refuses, calling it a place for unambitious women. Emma convinces her to at least consider the offer. Back in the house, Emma finds the step where John hides his box. She opens it to find his bank card and baseball cards, as well as the key to his safe deposit box. The next night, the mayor and his wife visit John to give a gift to thank him for reconsidering the rally. John receives the gift and angrily shuts the door. He smashes the plates in the sinks and goes outside to check on the box he hid. He finds nothing unusual, so he tears open the gift and finds a picture frame. In the morning, John wakes up to find everything back to normal until he hears the voices of workers outside. He opens the door to the backyard, only to see the workers setting up for the rally. John loses his temper and tells everyone to leave his backyard. The officer tells him to calm down and that he'll come by later to check on him again. Over the next few hours, John patches the hole the train made and pays someone to come take the train away by tomorrow for $800 in cash. He goes back to the bank and the boss tells him that he is late and asks why he wasn't at work yesterday. This implies that Emma took up his body yesterday, making him unable to get to work. The young mother calls him on the phone, saying that she needs to talk to him and that she is at the women's shelter that Emma suggested. John rushes to the women's shelter and pretends that he's there to make a donation. He tells the staff that he needs to see the young mother. John advises the young mother to stay away from Emma and says he'll give her the money so that she and the little boy can leave the town, stating that it's not safe here for the little boy. John and Emma both want different things, and he's afraid of what will happen since Emma is obsessed with the boy. John drives the young mother back to her trailer and tells her that he can't go back home and he'll give all of his money to her. She tells him that he has to go back home to Emma. But John is adamant in not going back because he knows for sure he will change into Emma once he goes back. He then tells her he'll take them wherever she wants to go. She tells him that she has family somewhere else, and John agrees to take her there. In the evening, John comes back to the bank, but the doors are locked. He gives up and travels to the lake. The officer finds John lying underneath the tree. He asks if he is okay. John sits back up and tells the officer that he doesn't want to go home. He tells the officer that his mother held his head underwater when he was a child. The officer tries to convince him to go back home, but John refuses, so the officer tells John that he cannot stay out here. The officer drives him back to the house, and John reluctantly enters. He grabs a bag, drives towards the nearest motel, and asks the clerk to give him a room. Inside the room, John opens the bag to reveal Emma's clothes and wig. He cries out to Emma that she can't do this to him. The next day, the man John hired to remove the trains knocks at the front door. At the same time, the mayor's wife also comes to visit and asks where John took the young mother and the little boy. Emma tells her that she'll call the young mother later to check up on her. Later, Emma comes by the cafe where the young mother works and asks her why she wasn't at the shelter last night. She tells Emma that John came by the shelter yesterday and said that he will give her the money she asked for and he'll drive them to her family's place. Emma tells her that he never discussed this with her. The young mother apologizes for the trouble that she has caused them and that she did not mean to come between them. Emma tells her that she spoke to the mayor's wife about getting her a job at the bank. The young mother still refuses, and Emma walks away. Emma comes back home and goes down to the basement, where she sees a box of John's old toys. She calls the young mother using John's voice, saying to meet at the motel so that she can receive the money. Obviously, Emma is now determined to defeat John and be the dominant personality of his body. 
The next day, Emma comes to the bank acting like John, when she meets the boss, who says that there's a stack of paperwork that needs to be done, and hands him a pile of folders. Emma sits down at the office, and uses the safe deposit box key to get John's money. She hides the money in a paper bag, and goes back home. Later that evening, Emma goes out to a bar, where she introduces herself using the young mother's name to the man she's dancing with. She invites him back to the motel room, where she gets the man with a pipe in the head. She puts John's suit on the man's body and lit the room on fire in order to fake John's death. Moments later, the young mother sees fires coming from the motel, and she runs towards the room, calling for John. She stands in disbelief as she sees the room burn to the ground. The next morning, the officer, the mayor's wife, and the senator's advisor inform Emma of John's supposed death, which was confirmed by the young mother. The scene cuts to the rally that is still happening, but Emma refuses to join in the rally. She calls the young mother in and tells her that she doesn't want what happened to John to happen to anyone ever again. She says she'll give her the money and she must take the little boy out of the town because he isn't safe here. It's implied that at this moment, John overpowers Emma and is the one who's telling her to escape because he doesn't want the cycle of abuse to continue. The movie ends with the rally finishing and the mayor's wife calling Emma to come out. But she has closed the curtains and locked all the doors, sealing herself inside the home, indicating the ensuing fight between Emma and John over the control of their body. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.